Hello, my name is Evan Wilhite, and I'm a senior front-end engineer at Four Kitchens. This is the second video in a series about component-based theming in Drupal 8. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, the solution, which is uh, theming using this component structure, and then including that markup in the Drupal templates, and we'll show a very simple example of that. So let's talk about this component-based development. So we've seen here the template structure where the markup's contained in the templates folder. Um, that was in the stable theme. So I'm going to jump up to a theme that I've created that, that uses Pattern Lab structure. But I want to focus in on one part in particular, which is uh, this patterns directory here. This directory is what contains all of our components. Um, in a true component-driven uh, theme, you're going to have somewhere a directory that contains all of the markup and all of the styles and all of the JavaScript for your website. And you're gonna see how to connect that in with the Drupal site uh, here in a little while. But first, let's go over this component-based development. So you'll see here I have base, atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. So I've pretty much kept in line with Pattern Lab's default naming scheme. Again, if, that, uh, if you have sort of a naming scheme that works better for you, that's something that you can do with Pattern Lab. I'm just using the defaults here. So under atoms, for instance, I'm going to show you sort of those smallest level elements that we have. Um, so you can see under here we have text, list, images, uh, buttons. There are some other things in there as well. Um, but you get the idea. These are the smallest level elements on the website. Under text, we have headings. And you can see I've separated out the uh, heading 1 to, to heading 6 in their own directories. But let's take a look at a specific directory. So here we have a heading one, and you can see in here that we have three files, and really we're going to focus on two right now. We have a twig file, which you'll notice the naming for that is just .twig, and um, we have our markup in here. We have the markup that we want um, for the Drupal system. We have the class name that we want for a styling hook. Um, we're using the variable name that we want to use in here. So again, we're defining something uh, for our pattern library, we're saying, okay, here is the ideal scenario. This is the markup that I want, and here, uh, here are the styling hooks. And then you'll also see right beside this that I have my heading one styles. And so these are these are the styles that impact this single class, the heading one class. Um, I'm using block element modifier syntax, um, so you may see that in the videos. That's not a requirement, um, but using some kind of syntax that keeps uh, your CSS dry and your inheritance chain clean is a good idea um, if you're going to be building this way. Um, so we have the twig file here, and we have the CSS file. Now I'm going to actually jump over to, to the Pattern Lab instance that I have here. I, I am running a Drupal site just on a local server that's pretty uh, bare bones. Uh, but I have set up a Pattern Lab instance here. And so this is specifically the text portion of our atoms. Um, so we're actually looking at this, the equivalent of this directory right here, um, the text section. And so this is the header one styling that we've defined. You can see if I change the uh, font size in here, uh, we should see that change over here as well. And so as we build out these patterns, so as a front-end developer comes and builds out patterns, um, this being one of the simplest, um, but also one of the most crucial, as we're building out these patterns, um, we can define them as we want. We can use the classes, the markup that we want. Um, we're not worried at all right now about the system that this is being built in. We're focused on the things that only should matter, which are um, writing a good, clean, semantic front-end. And again, we're defining that markup here as well. And so this is what our header uh, styling looks like here. So let's jump over and I'll show a simple example of how to incorporate this into Drupal. So here we are on the Drupal site. Uh, and you can see that I've created some uh, filler content here. And you can see our header one page title here does not have the same styling. Uh, it's not using the same font, doesn't have the same size or color as this uh, uh, header one styling that we defined. So what happens in this component-based building is that we still have this templates folder um, in our theme. And this is down here. And it follows the same conventions as you saw in the stable theme that I showed you earlier. This still exists. But what we've done is we've allowed the front end to be completely separate. 
And now there's this layer for someone who is familiar with Drupal, who is familiar with the system, to connect the two. And so let's go in and show a very simple uh, example of how this would work. Uh, the Twig file that we need to actually control this page title is going to be in the content. Uh, in at least the stable theme is going to be in, in the content folder, and uh, it's called page-title.html.twig. So this is the default syntax for that file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to write a statement in here. I'm going to use a Twig function called include, and it's basically a way of including another HTML file in the system that's elsewhere. Um, if you've used other building systems, this is uh, sometimes referred to as a partial. Uh, and it's literally just a way to tell the Twig system to include markup from somewhere else. The syntax for that is include. And you will also want to define some variables in here. And this is going to be typical of uh, all the uh, examples that I show in this. So one thing that's key to this currently, um, this may eventually be in core, but one thing that's key to this currently is that there is a module that is required, the components module. This is a module by John Alvin, who's a big proponent of this system. And so you'll want to have this module installed um, and enabled. And also uh, in your info file and your theme, you'll need to actually define where your component sections are. By default in Drupal 8, uh, it only wants to search for Twig files uh, in that templates directory. Uh, and again, that's current as of this video. Um, that may change in the future. But for now, um, this module just allows you to define other libraries that are elsewhere. And you can choose your own naming conventions here. So you'll see that I've created ones for each of my top levels uh, uh, in Pattern Lab and told, uh, told the info file where to find those in the directory tree. And so those are defined here. What that allows me to do, I can say include the at symbol atoms. And because I've defined that in that info file, it actually knows that that means to go straight into this directory right here. And then from there, it's just the directory tree as you would write it normally. So this would be a text headings. So now I've told this page title file, this Drupal page title file in the templates folder, that what I want it to do is not to create its own markup here. I want it to go over and include a file from somewhere else. And again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, because we used our own variables over there, uh, we need to connect those up accordingly. So what Drupal expects is that the page title variable will be named title. What we said was heading. All right, now you see uh, that we've told uh, the include, that the heading variable that we have over here, it actually needs to be past the value of title. And so we've passed that value, and now you can see that our header over here uh, now contains our uh, heading one class and the markup for our, our header one. So this is a very simple example, but hopefully you can begin to see uh, where the power of this lies. And so while you've added an extra um, layer in, there's an extra layer that's actually always been there. Um, we've just learned how to work around it, but there's that extra layer of connecting your components to the system. That over time becomes second nature to you. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to build this component-based structure over here that doesn't care anything about the system that it's built on and is logically organized contains all of the files uh, organized together for each component. And not only is it component driven, but because you've built this way, you now have a deliverable that can go into any system. And so if this client, uh, is, let's say you're building a marketing site for a client, but they also are building a React app somewhere else, you can ha hand them this component uh, uh, based front end and Another, a React developer can easily take these HTML components that you've built and now convert them into React components because they're logically organized. It's easy to tell what's going on. Um, the thing that I also didn't mention about this because I'm not going into it very much um, in this video series is that by doing it this way, you also, I'm specifically using Pattern Lab, but this, uh, this makes sure 
that the that the style guide that I'm delivering is a true living style guide, because where I'm editing my SAS files, where I'm editing any JavaScript or markup, those are authoritative files both for the system and for the style guide itself. And so it's that ideal scenario where um, everything you're doing applies to both sides. And because you're using this include syntax, um, it allows you to both use that markup, that uh, clean generated markup that you've created uh, in your component driven theming in the system. And it also can drive this, the automated style guide as well. And so that's always being kept up to date. So I hope this was helpful. In the next video, we're going to dive into a little bit more complex of an example that probably uh, will be something that you'll find yourself working on uh, very frequently in Drupal. All right. Thank you.